The U.S. jobs report out today surpassed expectations. 467,000 new jobs were added last month, even as Omicron spiked. President Joe Biden is calling it a historic economic comeback. This Friday afternoon, the moderator of CBS's Face the Nation, Margaret Brennan, joins us live from Washington, D.C. to break down what this means for the future of the U.S.'s economy. Margaret, happy to see you this Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so what do these numbers indicate? I understand you'll have the Deputy Treasury Secretary on your show Sunday. Uh, what kind of insight will he provide? Well, we want to know a few things. One of them is whether the Biden administration needs to uh, stop pushing for more emergency help for uh, the American people. Uh, remember, they have all those efforts stalled before Congress right now to pump in more spending. Does this brighter jobs number make that uh, unnecessary in their view. Uh, we also want to know what the plans are and projection is for inflation, because while this brighter than expected picture on jobs is is happening, we're also seeing competition for workers and that's pushing wages up at the same time prices for goods are going up. So uh, how is that offset working and, and when is there um, some sort of evening out of the economy that continues to be disrupted by the pandemic. And we even saw that in this latest jobs number because 2 million Americans said they had to stop working because of COVID or they couldn't show up to work because of COVID. So it's not exactly clear sailing. Uh, we wanna know what the Biden administration's plan is. The Winter Olympics are underway, as you know, and many athletes actually boycotted the opening ceremonies and countries have been really outspoken uh, against China's human rights abuses. Uh, Margaret, what can you tell us about the current uh, relationship between the U.S. and China? The United States and China are in direct competition on so many things. They are the world's two largest economies. Uh, they are also uh, in a war of influence, uh, frankly. What we heard from the FBI director this week is that he laid out how China steals and hacks uh, information from American companies things that cost American workers jobs. Uh, he laid out what is a real trajectory for potential conflict between the two powers. And so this week, as China uh, really kind of recaptures public attention and stands on the global stage by hosting the Olympics, uh, it puts in stark contrast uh, the difference between the two countries, and it raises questions about how American companies sh should consider doing business in China. Uh, you know, the Biden administration decided not to send any high-level U.S. officials to Beijing to the games because of the ongoing genocide. One million people, according to the State Department, are in concentration camps in China. Some senators, like our guest Marco Rubio, want to put more restrictions in place so that you and I don't end up buying goods that are made with slave labor inside those camps. Um, so it's an important conversation about the economy and human rights, and we'll have it on Sunday. And Margaret, finally, the FDA decided this week to ask Pfizer to resubmit its data on two doses of a vaccine for children under five, while Pfizer continues to study whether a third dose is needed. Uh, you'll have an expert on this Sunday to discuss this. What's the latest on this, do we know? Well, this is confusing. The FDA said in mid-December that they didn't want to green light two shots for children four and under until they knew whether a third dose would be needed. And then this week, they said, resubmit the data, Pfizer, because we might want to move ahead with just two doses while we study the third. So what changed in the past few weeks? What we do know happened is that there was a surge in pediatric hospitalizations due to Omicron. So is the FDA saying essentially they made a mistake, that the doses should have been made earlier, uh, made available earlier? Have they seen something new? I think this is an important conversation for parents of young children. I'm one of them. Um, and so that they can figure out what to expect uh, and plan for. Um, Dr. Gottlieb has said time and again on our program that he expects March to be the date on the calendar when a shot could be available for those four and under. A lot to talk about uh, this weekend. Margaret, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Of course, we will be watching Face the Nation as we do every Sunday morning right here on Channel 6.